Hi everybody, this is Cheryl again and welcome to my sewing room. I get asked a question a lot and it's all about how big should I make my comforter, my quilt, or I want to make a blanket for my king size bed and so how big should I make it and how much fabric do I need? Well, that's very hard for me to answer in the comments section. In fact, it's impossible because there's so many variables to making a quilt for a bed or a comforter or a blanket, whatever it is you're trying to make. Here is a pamphlet that I picked up in Joann's and it's dated 2014. So it shows you how long I've had this. It's free, it was free. And they have these little pamphlets on every aisle in their store. They're free and they're on a variety of subjects. How to make drapes, how to make bed covers, how to make clothing, how to make scarves, how to make pillows. They're wonderful little guides to get you started in a variety of sew sewing projects. So when you're in there, look for these, pick them up. Even if you're not interested in it, file away because you know at some time in the future you might need it. So it's really important to grab these. They're free. Now on the back it gives you very general information and I'll blow this up in a moment. It talks about using extra wide fleece for this duvet cover. It gives you mattress sizes and just some general sewing instructions on how to put it together. So this is what's on that little flyer there so that you can read it. Okay, now this is the sizes of mattresses that they listed on there. A twin, full queen, and king. Remember that a king size mattress varies greatly depending on if you have an eastern king or a regular king or whatever they call them out there now. So there are differences. So be aware, measure your own mattress so that make sure you know what you're dealing with. Now for the fleece duvet cover, they recommend that you take your current bed cover you're using and measure it and add one inch for seam allowance. Then to put it together, they recommend that you bring front sides together of your fleece and stitch it on three sides. I recommend that you kind of go around the corner a little bit and of course you have an opening here. Then they recommend to turn it front side out but I recommend just another little step is cut a little bit of the fabric off at the corner so that they're not too bulky. Then of course turn it front side out and insert your current bed cover inside of it. And then you would want to close up the opening so you would fold the edges in a half inch because you're using a half inch seam allowance if I didn't already mention that. And then use a slip stitch or ladder stitch, it's the same thing, to close up that opening. Now if you're not sure how to do that stitch, Click on the link in the upper right hand corner and I have a video that explains how to do that. All right. Now, I bought a duvet cover oh, quite a while back and I wasn't happy because I spent a lot of money on the duvet cover and I wish I had just bought a regular bed cover, a brand new one. But if that's not what you want to do, here are some solutions for one of the problems with it is that once you put your current bed cover inside it doesn't stay in place. So a couple of things you can do is in each corner, all four corners, stitch all the way through the fabric, okay, and do like a little tack stitch. Go around three, four times to hold it in place. Or if this cover is going to be a permanent cover, you were going to throw away that old blanket and you're just using it for insulation, you could do a little decorative stitch pattern to hold the layer together. You will see this 
on new bed covers. I've seen this. I've actually got one that has this on there. And they just measured out so that everything was symmetrical and did two to three inches of stitching to make this little pattern. And that's going to hold it all in place. So you have a, a great solution for that. One of the problems that I ran into was that it didn't really go over how to calculate to so that you get the right amount of fabric for that duvet cover. So I'm going to go over that. Whether you're making a regular brand new comforter or bed cover, whatever it is you're making, I'm going to give you some, uh, some simple formula formulas to use for calculating it. So always measure your, your mattress, no matter what size it is, so that you know what you're working with. So you need to know that first. So if you were going to make a new cover or the duvet cover, this is how you would go about it. I recommend for a twin bed, you would use 50 inch wide fleece. Now that 50 inch wide fleece will go over the side of a twin bed about five inches. All right, so, but that's not going to cover that whole mattress on the side. It won't go all the way to the floor. So you need to calculate what the drop length is on each side. So you're going to have a drop length on each side and a drop length that goes over the end of the bed also. So if you're using 50 inch wide fleece, you need additional length to go over the end of the bed down here. So 75 inches plus 15. So this is the drop length. Now this is the number I'm throwing in there. Your drop length may be different. You may want it to go all the way to the floor. You may have an extra thick mattress, a pillow top mattress, and you want a longer drop length. So this is just a random number I threw in. Replace this number with what your desired length is. So 75 inches plus 15 equals 90 inches that I need. I need a strip of fabric 90 inches long that goes down there. Okay, now let me lift this up a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to, I'm looking at my camera here so I can see which way to go. There we go. Alrighty, so here you go. Now you need to calculate the amount of fabric for the sides. Okay, take this 90 inches and multiply it times two. That equals 180 inches that you need for that length. Now, to calculate all of the yardage that you will need for the top, you're going to take that 180 inches, divide it by 36, that's yards. You're gonna need to buy five yards for the top only. That's not even the back. That's not the back. That's just the top. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. So if you were going to make that for the twin bed, this is how you would cut your fabric. So you have five yards of fabric. You're going to need to cut 50 inches by 90 inches for the center and two more pieces 15 inches by 90 inches and then you're going to stitch them together and there you have your top piece. You would do the same for the back. So if you're going to have fleece on the back, then that's you would do the same thing for the back. So front and back, this is how you lay out your fabric. Then go ahead and put it together like I instructed earlier in the video. Put the front and back sections together and stitch it up. Insert your old bed, bed cover inside and there you go. That will be your insulation. Or if you're going to get cotton batting or whatever else, you would put that inside. Okay. Remember, these are very, very general instructions. For a queen bed or king bed, whichever one you want to use, 
I recommend you use the extra wide fleece which is 60 inches wide. So there again you would calculate the full length of the bed plus whatever drop length you wanted. Add that on to the 60 inches and then punch that number in, the drop length in, into that formula and then continue with that formula and just stitch it up the same way. Whoops, sorry. Now, this 60 inches will just cover the width on the queen but remember the king is 76 inches wide so you're going to have more of a drop or extra fabric you're going to even calculate for that. I hope that makes sense. So it's the drop length is the number you need to punch in to that formula. Well I hope this information was helpful to you and I'm sure that there are some of you out there maybe have more experience you have other comments or suggestions just leave them in the comment section because viewers may find it very helpful remember again I want to stress this is just very general uh, instructions and information to help get you started now if you like this video click on thumbs up and then click on share to share this video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed yet then click on that red button down there in the lower right hand corner enter your email address and click on the little bell so you receive future email notifications about my latest videos I'm Cheryl so glad you came to my sewing room see you next time Bye for now, and don't forget, happy sewing!